haven't seen me, I think, for a little bit more than a week. Uh, but, you know, we actually had another hurricane come through in the other part of the state. Nicole, so you guys understand that. And how is it that, you know, the state of Florida, uh, the Monday before the election, we could declare a state of emergency for Nicole, conduct an election, count like 7.7 .7 million votes by midnight. Next morning, we're at the EOC, storm hits. You have washouts of A1A, other parts. We repair that by the weekend, and these other states are still counting their votes from the election. How pathetic is that? I'm joined here by our Senate President, Kathleen Pasadomo from Southwest Florida, also our Department of Economic Opportunity Secretary, Dane Eagle, also from Southwest Florida. I know we've got a number of legislators here. I think we have representatives Botana and Gia Lombardo. Are you guys here? Uh, where are they? There we go. Okay. We have said, uh, the new senator, John Martin. Where's Jonathan? Okay. And we've got, um, so we're going to be doing two big announcements today. Um, uh, one is going to be with the uh, Disaster Relief Fund. The other is going to be for some uh, economic uh, support. Uh, but we have Deborah Cox, Executive Director of the Florida National Guard Foundation, one of our recipients. Michelle Jones, President of the Florida Emergency Preparedness Association. Uh, Dr. Carol uh, Probesfeld, President of State College of Florida, Manatee, Sarasota. Dr. Tom Leitzel, President of South Florida State College. Dr. Jeffrey Albritton, President of Florida Southwestern State College, Todd Everly, Senior Director Lee Technical Colleges, Charlie Peace, Director of Cape Coral Technical College, uh, John uh, Roselle, Director of Fort Myers Technical College, uh, Joshua Matlock, President and CEO of Career Source Suncoast, uh, Donna Doubleday, President and CEO of Career Source Heartland, Peg Elmore, President and CEO of Career Source Southwest Florida, um, Sarah Owen, CEO of of Collaboratory, Ashley Mayer, CEO of Charlotte Community Foundation, and Aileen Connolly Kiesler, President CEO of Collier Community Foundation. And so you'll see why all those people are here in, the, uh, in a minute. Uh, of course, we had um, uh, September, um, a major hurricane hit, hit this area. Uh, I know it's done uh, a lot of damage. Uh, you know, we've had so many people working so hard at the local level, we've had people, of course, at the state level, we've had people all across the country come and help out and assist. And uh, it was something that we knew would be difficult but we said uh, we understand it's going to be uh, require a lot of effort, but, but we're going to do well by this, and we're going to get it done. So I had a lot of people from this area come to me a couple days after the storm concerned about the bridge here, and they were being told that there wasn't a solution for that and uh, not really going to have access uh, to their home or the mainland in an easy fashion. So we, you know, we decided to take up the mantle on that, not our road, not our bridge at the state level, but you know what? You know, you just got to put the bureaucracy aside and get things done. So we were able to take that job. Uh, we cut through the bureaucracy and we got it up and running after three days of doing it. And that's just important. Able to also reconnect Sanibel uh, Causeway that had three breaks in it. And so that was uh, open to the public three weeks of the day when the storm hit. And was actually, we opened it a little earlier than that for the utility vehicles and the debris and all that stuff to be able to go help help that area. So at the end of the day, you know, you're going to have the ability for these islands to bounce back. Not going to be able to, you wouldn't have been able to do that if you had no uh, routine access from the mainland there. You know, we were flying people in. Search and rescue, obviously, but then we were saying send utility workers by helicopter, Chinook helicopter, sending them to Santa, which is fine, but that's not enough. You just can't get the, the number of people. So you saw those big convoys coming in, and that makes a huge difference for all the key things that are doing. So uh, we, we understood that infrastructure. We understood the search and rescue, but we also understood, yes, FEMA, but, you know, FEMA's a bureaucracy on some of the individual assistants, wanted to be able to help out in ways that are more nimble. So the first lady of Florida, uh, Casey, my wife, even before the storm hit, had already established the Florida Disaster Fund for charitable contributions. And so it has now raised more than $55 million for storm victims. <laughs> Thank you. 
I've already distributed uh, more than seven million through the fund, um, and these are things for like helping our first responders that got impacted, helping our school teachers, helping residents repair and rebuild their homes, and there's much more on the way. We may work with the legislature to maybe tweak the. Uh, uh, availability of some of the groups, because uh, I think there's some good groups who may not qualify under Florida statute that we could probably help to do that. So we're going to be working very hard on this, you know, over the coming weeks. I am happy, though, today to be able to announce that today uh, we're going to be able to award another $1 million from the Florida Disaster Fund, and this will be to help emergency management personnel, National Guardsmen, and other community members uh, who have been uh, displaced or, or negatively impacted impacted by the hurricane. So we have our National Guard found, you know, we had the National Guard mobilized before the storm, uh, you know, really was even close. And as soon as the storm came, you know, they were on site immediately helping out. Uh, so you're going to do to the National Guard Foundation, you're going to do money for the Florida Emergency Preparedness Association. So they represent the EM uh, emergency management professionals, uh, money to the Collier, Cal Collier County Community Foundation, Charlotte County Community Foundation, and the Collaboratory, which is a community foundation helping people throughout Southwest Florida. So these funds can help people for basic living essentials, housing, food, transportation, also could help with rebuilding and repair efforts. And so we appreciate all the folks um, who, uh, who've who been working hard. We understand guardsmen, EMT, all these people, uh, they're not immune from having some of these effects. So this uh, hopefully will, will help out. Uh, we are gonna be doing um, a lot more with this and the First Lady's working really hard uh, to get as much money out uh, as possible. And as I said, we may wanna look at some of the organizations that are eligible under Florida law, because I think there's some that are doing good work here that may not fit uh, what the statute says. I think that'd be an easy thing to, to, to kind of tweak. But at the end of the day, you know, we want the money to be as impactful as possible to people in ways that the government programs may not be able to reach. And so that's, uh, that, that's the, the, the philosophy behind it. We also understand that, um, you know, this is an area that is uh, is primed for for a big economic recovery coming out of this. I got no doubt about that. It's a great part of the world. Uh, people see how beautiful it is. They've seen how resilient the community is. We've had a lot of good stuff going on with our economy statewide in terms of you know our businesses being open. Southwest Florida boomed during the, the pandemic because we were open. A lot of people moved here or vacation here to get away from some of the bad policies. So we were able to really. Uh, benefit, you know, at the same time, you know, something like this does impact uh, the economy. And so we want to make sure that we're doing things to make sure we have everything in place so that we can see a boom in the future. And one of the things that means is making sure we have people with the right training to be able to fill key positions in our workforce and in our economy, and particularly things like skilled labor that are really at a premium. And so uh, today, uh, we're going to be uh, awarding $7.7 .7 million for workforce education funds for to the three state colleges I mentioned, two technical colleges, and three workforce boards uh, to be able uh, to help with those workforce needs for the people of Southwest Florida. So State College of Florida, $2.9 million to expand commercial driver's license and logistics programs. Florida Southwestern State, uh, $2 million to expand training for information technology. South Florida State College, uh, $618,000 to expand their CDL and their welding programs. And we've done a lot on commercial driver's license. When I became governor, the state of Florida was producing about six or 700 CDLs a year. Now we're doing about 3,500 truck drivers are being produced a year in the state of Florida. Very important thing for our economy. Fort Myers Technical College, 973,000 to expand programs in diesel maintenance and machine manufacturing. Cape Coral Technical College, 200 grand to expand nursing program. We've done a lot on nursing uh, in this most recent budget. Major, major investment there. It's going to continue to be an issue. This will help supplement that. Career Source Florida, 1 million to expand their services to help impacted Floridians connect with these and other opportunities in the 
area. So this will end up representing about 3,200 students that will be equipped with skills that can go out um, and help power this economy going forward. Uh, we're also doing a million dollars across the region's three local career source boards to expand their services and connect impacted Floridians uh, with additional opportunities, uh, both in this region and throughout the state. So uh, we, we understand this is a very multifaceted recovery process. We're going to look to do everything we can uh, across uh, all the different ranges. I know we're going to be in a special session of the legislature in December. We'll announce those dates shortly, but it is going to happen. We're going to do the property tax uh, uh, relief for the people that whose homes were, were destroyed. Uh, we look forward to being able to do that. And yeah. We're also going to look to see additional needs. You know, we may do some appropriations to be able to help uh, some of the uh, impacted communities. You know, the feds do stuff, but you know what? I mean, you can't just sit around and wait for them to do everything. So we want to make sure that we're doing our part at the state level. Got a big budget surplus, and so this is where you need that uh, when, when you can make an impact. So we'll be looking at that and, and, and some other associated uh, items that I think will, will be really, really good. So, all right, so we have all these checks. How do we want to do? Do we want everyone, all the different representatives to come up, yeah, gain? Maybe up, huh? you hand, maybe we'll line everybody up right here and we'll, we'll snap a, snap all a right. pick. State College of Florida. Okay. Yeah, so we'll just, we'll line everybody up. Resource, uh, for the boards, all the boards, come on up. Come on up. Florida Southwestern, you get two. <laughs> Fort Myers Technical College. Hey, Congratulations, everybody. Wow, good job. Thank everyone for being here. Uh, thank you to uh, all the recipients for the good work you're going to be doing on behalf of Southwest Florida. Um, to the governor and the first lady for their commitment to Southwest Florida and what we're doing in the ongoing recovery efforts. Obviously, the first few weeks were crucial. Uh, governor was on the ground with the first lady immediately after the storm that first week. You could just see the debris, the depression, the anxiety, uh, everybody figuring out what's going on with the, the bridges torn down. And Is that better? All right. How's that? All right. So the first week, obviously the governor's on the ground immediately, but then you see the, the depression, the anxiety, the debris, the destruction. And once those bridges were rebuilt and people saw that there was, that we had the energy, the opportunity to come back, I saw this, this area change. I saw the motivation come back. I saw people have hope again, and that's because of the governor and the first lady for their commitment to this area. And that's not gonna stop. 
So while we've been doing uh, nonstop working, obviously the governor had a few things going on in election, another hurricane hit. He's back here today making further commitments. Workforce is going to be crucial in getting back on our feet. We're going to focus on economic development, making sure people can get back to work. Uh, but there are many people displaced. I see Jay Johnson over there. His dad lost uh, Burt's. Uh, you, they probably have employees that need some place to go. Well, we're going to give them opportunity, rapid credentialing, nursing, IT, CDL training. You can go get a job as a truck driver in two weeks and go make 100 grand a year. That's incredible. We're going to be committed to helping now in the short term and in the long term as well. We're going to be working with Congress, our new Congress, our new legislature, with our new uh, Senate president to make sure that we have funding available to help rebuild. And we're committed, we're excited, and we're not going anywhere. So thank you, Governor. Thank you, Senate President. I feel like I should be. Uh, I feel like I should be seeing Mac the knife with a uh, microphone in my hand. I. Uh, good morning, and thank you all for coming, and thank you all, particularly all of you who have done so much for Southwest Florida this last month and a half. You all are on the front lines. You all are the people that are going to help us rebuild. I want to say something that's sort of a personal. As as we were driving in, I, I was in the car with the governor, and he was looking out, and he was looking very pensive, and he said, you know, I was here. Day, day, two days after the storm, and, and he was describing to me the debris he saw and the hopelessness he saw, and he said, they're coming back. They're coming back, and they're going to come back stronger and better and greater. And, and you know, to have him just say that, I live in southwest Florida, and to have our governor to be here so often and to really care about how you all are coming back, it's just a wonderful thing. And I, and I want to thank you, Governor, for doing that for us. And I know, and you said to me, I'm going to keep on coming. So uh, thank you, Governor. Thank you all for being here. Well, we're excited about uh, what we've been able to, to do. We got a lot more work to do, um, and we are going to be doing that. So uh, I want to thank everybody for all your efforts, because I know a lot of people have been working very hard. Uh, we're going to continue to do that and uh, make sure that, uh, that, that we get everyone uh, back on their feet, and, and not just back on the feet, but I think the best days for this region are clearly ahead. Uh, we just gotta We just got to make that happen. And also just say for everybody here, throughout the state, but particularly in Southwest Florida, uh, you know, thank you for your support of me last Tuesday night. I mean, that was a huge, huge thing. And they were saying like, well, you know, you had the storm here, people aren't going to vote necessarily. And you know what, people came out, you know, and they voted. And I think we had the biggest, uh, just out of Lee County, you know, we had the biggest margin that I think any any candidates had in quite some time. And so, so thank you. It means a lot. We'll continue to be here helping out. Okay. Any questions? Governor, can you hear me okay? I can. Last month, you came to Southwest Florida. Yeah, so let me, uh, you know, so it's a great question. So it's a question about, uh, so FEMA does this housing mission after storms. Obviously, we had homes that were destroyed. But we also wanted to be able to get in the game and do it maybe a little bit more nimbly. So they did allow us to, to pursue that. So, so Kevin Guthrie is working on it. Uh, I'm going to let him kind of uh, roll out exactly, exactly when um, I've, quite frankly, been dealing with him about Hurricane Nicole over the last week um, because we were, we were over in Volusia County and all that. So uh, we will be uh, putting out uh, more information on that. I'm going to have Kevin uh, communicate. I can tell you people are, are excited about the ability to be able to, uh, to, to fulfill this mission. And, and I think it's going to be something that's going to not displace what FEMA does, but, but supplement uh, what FEMA does and to be able to have some temporary thing on your property while your property is being rehabbed, uh, that's a lot better than living in like some temporary little trailer city. And, and I think that that's, uh, that's the direction that they're looking to go. No, look, I think we, we just we just finished this election, okay? People just need to chill out a little bit on some of this stuff. I mean, seriously, we just ran an election. 
We have this Georgia runoff coming, which is very important for Republicans to win that Georgia runoff. I mean, I know around the country, uh, Florida was kind of the the biggest bright spot. It was not so bright in many other parts of the country. It was a it was a it was a substandard performance given the dynamics that are at play. So hopefully we'll be able to be able to do that. But I think what people like me who've been given the opportunity to continue is okay. Uh, let's do something with that. And the reason why we won historic victory is at the end of the day, we led, we delivered, and we had your back when you needed us. That that is why we won big. So we're, the fact that, I mean, just think, literally, we have this election on two, last Tuesday. The next morning, I'm in the emergency operations center in Tallahassee because of this storm on the east coast of Florida. And, of course, we're back here, you know, within a week of that, uh, helping southwest Florida. So at the end of the day, you know, I think what we showed in Florida is just uh, produce results, lead with conviction. Uh, I never put my finger in the wind or took polls. I just did what I thought thought was right. But what the election gives us the opportunity to do is to continue to deliver. And so we're going to continue to deliver. Uh, we're not going to look back. And I think that that's very, very significant. But what I think Florida has shown is that, you know, you look at all the problems that the country is having, the inflation, the open border, uh, all these different things, a lot of failures. Florida is an example that, you know what, you can get the big things right. You can get things right. Imagine if you had a bureaucracy and leadership like they did in New York. Would that bridge have been fixed in three days? Is there anybody here that thinks that bridge would have been fixed in three days with that bureaucratic mindset? Of course it wouldn't have. If anyone does believe that, please talk to me after this, because I have oceanfront property. I would like to sell you in Arizona. <laughs> And I don't think it would work. So, so no, of course not. So, so I think at the end of the day, um, you know, it's been a long election. We've got the Georgia runoff. Uh, but for me, it's like, okay, uh, what more do we need to do uh, to continue to make Florida lead the way? And, and we're going to be focusing on that. And I think we're going to be able to deliver a lot. You know, the good thing about winning a big victory, we've got super majorities in the legislature now. And really, I think, have, have an opportunity to continue great momentum. So we're excited. <laughs> You what? Tony DeSantis, everything you see in that machine that's been blown away is out in the estuary at this time. There's a bunch of us that would like to go out there and help clean our estuary, but we need, you know, we, we need strength, manpower out there. Because everything you see is up inside the mangroves. Right. Pretty much destroyed the estuary. What help could we expect or who would you like us to talk to? Because there's Yeah, to talk, talk to Kevin Guthrie. So we have... Uh, our Division of Emergency Management Director, he's been down. He He's not here this week because of the Nicole, but he's been down here really since the storm. And um, we have in place an ability for maritime debris removal. Uh, that's one of the key missions. And so if that's something that we could work, that they could work with you to supplement, they want to do that. They understand that it's important both from an economic perspective, but also from an environmental perspective. Okay, guys. Well, thanks so much. God bless everybody. Great to see you. What a beautiful piece of property. Where am I going? Thanks, guys.